Hey everyone, welcome back to my bed. So today we're going to be going over the design and construction of a super precision boring tool that I've uh, designed in order to cut extremely precise uh, radii into graphite uh, for making radial air bearings. Um, I've gone over this in other videos, but as you probably know, the most critical part of an air bearing uh, for good function is the accuracy of the graphite bearing surface uh, in relation to whatever it's bearing on. Uh, so basically, whether you're whether it's a flat bearing riding on a granite surface plate or a round bearing like this that supports a shaft, the contour of those surfaces need to be in perfect match uh, for good function. If they're not, uh, the performance of the bearing can be significantly reduced uh, and it also just might not function at all. Uh, the tolerances depend uh, on what you're doing but generally I'm going to be aiming for around one to two microns of difference in radius between the graphite and the shaft itself. So obviously that's pretty difficult, uh, so let's talk about how we can do that. As you may know, I've already made one of these radial air bearings, uh, it's completed, um, and basically the way I did that was just using a standard run-of-the-mill boring head and those uh, cheap Chinese carbide boring bars. Um, I've talked about how I did this in a previous video, so I won't go too, too deep into it, but basically here you can just see me using that boring head to cut the radius into the graphite substrate of my bearing. Uh, so this worked. Uh, the bearing is done. It functions. There's videos of it on my channel. But I feel like I could do better. Uh, the process was extremely unreliable, finicky, and just downright didn't work well. So that's the whole goal is I'm trying to improve on it. Let me explain why this is bad. First of all, as you can see in the video, the boring bar is sticking out a ridiculous amount. Um, almost, well it's over 4 inches, because I had to cut this entire face in one pass. So right off the bat, there's a rigidity issue there. Uh, the finish on the graphite wasn't the best thing in the world uh, because of that. But the real issue with doing it this way goes a lot deeper, and it's really crazy. So basically, here we've got a drawing of that standard boring head that I used to cut uh, that graphite radius. Um, the way I went about cutting it is I set the radius as close as I could to the theoretical value. Uh, I then began taking passes, basically just chop milling uh, the graphite until the radius was close. And then once the width, once the cut was far enough, uh, in the x direction, I began literally sneaking up on the radius tenth by tenth at a time on the boring head, making these extremely tiny adjustments until there was a contact patch on the shaft which I felt was uh, sufficiently accurate uh, because there's no way to measure a simple radius like this, uh, I basically had to rely on gluing the shaft and touching it to the bearing to determine how close I was to the right radius. So anyways, once I had a radius that matched the shaft well, I decided to slow the mill down and take a finishing pass. So I turned the RPMs way down low, uh, dialed in a two-tenth width of cut, so it'd just be touching the material, and then engaged the quill power feed to begin the cut, and nothing happened. The boring bar didn't so much as touch the graphite, and I could not for the life of me figure out why. Basically, what had happened is at the initial speed that I had turned the boring bar, the centrifugal force was actually deflecting the boring bar outwards like this. Now this is obviously a massive over-exaggeration, but at that higher speed, the boring bar was slightly bent out and was inscribing a larger radius. This is the radius I was dialing in 10th by 10th, uh, 
and this was the correct radius, but when I had slowed it down and it had bent back to its original position, I then started cutting a smaller radius like that. And that was the wrong radius. I hadn't really paid attention to how fast I was going before, so I basically lost my number and I was stuck with the crappy surface finish. And for this reason, I do not want to keep using this uh, for cutting my extremely precise radii. Relying on the deflection of the steel shank of the tool to keep my numbers in check is not something I want to do. So here's what I've come up with. Alright, this is the boring tool that I've come up with to cut the radii on my graphite pieces. And let me explain how this works, because it looks a bit funky. Basically, it's going off of the idea that Ben Krasnow brought up in his video on air bearings, where that if you use the shaft that you'd like to have right in the air bearing as the cutting tool itself, you can impart that exact geometry into the graphite, therefore creating a perfectly matched radius with no need for precision tools whatsoever. I've talked about in other videos why his method didn't work for me, but the basic idea of it is what I'm going off of to create this tool here. So basically, this bottom lighter colored piece on the tool is a piece of my lathe shaft. I'm going to cut off a piece that's about 200 thousandths thick, and then essentially shape it into a cutting tool. So I'll make a series of grinds along the circumference and create what basically amount to four cutting edges, just like this. And then I'll be able to uh, cut a slight back relief on them so they don't rub. And I'm left with what is basically a slitting saw uh, that I can use to cut a radius. The important thing though is that I will never cut the back reliefs all the way up to the cutting edge because I need to preserve a small section of the original surface of the shaft so that I know for a fact the diameter of this tool is the exact diameter of the shaft that's riding in the lathe. So now we have a cutting tool that is the perfect diameter uh, for the radius we want to cut. Uh, we're good to go, but we're not in the clear yet because in order for this to create, to impart that perfect radius into the graphite, it needs to have zero runout. Even though we have this beautiful, perfect size cutter here, if our axis of rotation's over there, you can imagine this whole thing's gonna swing around and cut a completely different radius than what we want. So we need to have some method of dialing in the runout, and that's what the rest of this is. Here we can see a cross-sectional view of the cutter, or the bottom end of the cutter. And so basically, it's pretty simple. Here's that piece of the shaft that I described before. That's just going to be super glued onto this mandrel here. Uh, I can get away with that because I'm only gonna be cutting graphite. Obviously this wouldn't fly if you were to try and cut metal with this. But that's just gonna be super glued onto this mandrel, which will be a very sloppy slip fit into this bore. The reason we want it to be a sloppy fit is that so we can dial in the runout ourselves. I'll draw an exaggerated drawing here, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Because these diameters aren't the same, this entire mandrel and cutter in turn is able to move laterally uh, against the axis of the spindle. That way I can use a series of set screws coming in which you can see there, to basically use this like a four jaw chuck. Uh, I can indicate on each of the four cutting flutes and dial in this run out so it's zero. There is also a good size clearance hole for this bolt that attaches the cutter to the shank so that it does not incur a tilt uh, when it's shifted in any direction. Um, if this were a tight fit on the mandrel, and it was fixed 
up here because it's obviously bolted in. If you tried to shift it, it would basically create a moment and the whole cutter would want to tilt, which would affect the accuracy of our radius. So that's the idea here. It's a pretty simple concept. Uh, basically just create a cutter of the perfect diameter, make it 100% concentric to the axis of rotation, and then you have a boring tool that you can use to create that exact radius in uh, your graphite. So let's go build this thing. You do now. Here's the finished tool. Got the shank here with the four adjuster screws. Like that. There's the arbor with the slice of shaft. As you can see, there's a little patches of the original surface all along each flute. Basically, it's just going to bolt on like that. Then I'll dial in that run out on the mill see what kind of tolerances we can hold. All right, here it is as after a few minutes of messing with it. Got it more or less within a tenth. Now for the fine finicky tuning. Get it down even better.